Hello Moglets, today we're doing the Binet Showcase. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I'm going to be speaking a little bit softer for this video as it is 5 in the morning. And I know the title is a little dramatic. I truly do believe Binet is the best character in the game. That's a bold claim. He's a 4 star. What the heck? 4 star? Who cares about 4 stars? I want to start this video off with a bit of a overall discussion about team-based games. So when it comes to team-based games, let's take this one as an example. We have four party members. Most heroes have their specific roles. Ganyu deals damage, also is a pretty excellent hunter. Zhongli, after his buffs, comes close to Binet with his uh, support abilities. He can provide a shield, he can provide your team with more damage with his resistance reductions. Mona is mostly damage, I guess a bit of control with her E there as well. And the list goes on. And what makes Binet so amazing is he is like three characters in one. You know, he is a healer, he is a damage booster, and a very good one at that. He is also fully capable of dealing a good amount of damage. If there is ever a situation... If there is ever a... But please be quiet. <laughs> if there is ever a situation where we were only allowed to use one character for the rest of the time we were playing, I would choose Binette every single day. Binet is just one of those golden characters that fills so many different roles and he can be whatever you want him to be. Or he can be all three of them, which is how I typically use him. Without further ado, this is Moga's official Binet showcase. I wanted to give him his own dedicated video as he absolutely deserves it. Let's just go over his build, his stats. Uh, that 2700 attack I think is a little bit off because he is currently standing in his ring. <laughs> yeah, it's more like it. But that is a nice showcase of his amazing damage boosting abilities. You see 2700 attack, you're like, oh my god, that is a monster. And then it's boom, 1800. It's like, what the heck is that? We do currently have the primordial jade cutter on him. It is a five star weapon. I wasn't planning on giving it to him, but I was going for Shao's spear. Got that instead. Tried to make the most out of a bad situation. And uh, I think it's a good sword for him. I might eventually give it to Kaching once I finally get a decent Electro Goblet, but for now it's on Binet. Unless you're a very new player, you should also have access to his second best weapon, the Festering Desire. Especially for being a free weapon, this is amazing for Binet. It has tons of energy recharge, which is nice to get his ult back fast, even though he's a very nice energy generator with his super, super short cooldown E. Having an energy recharge for such a powerful, massive ult as his, Never a bad thing. But yeah, we have Primordial Jade Cutter. It increases his HP by 20% and provides himself with a little bit of an attack boost based on his max HP. It's only 1.2%, so it's not huge or anything, but it's something. That attack does not go into his base attack, unfortunately, which means it doesn't increase his damage boost, but regardless, I'll take it. As for artifacts, we are running 4-piece Crimson Witch. I believe this is the best set for a support DPS Binet, as you can pretty quickly take advantage of the 4-piece set's uh, abilities here. I did a build guide for all the different types of pyro units, and of obviously Binet was included in there. The other sort of mentioned sets were Maiden Beloved for more healing, but the thing is, I really don't believe Binet needs this. I don't think he needs anything to help his healing, because his healing is so good already. Do take that with a grain of salt, as I am speaking as someone who has a level 90 Binet with a level 10 ult, so it could be slightly more beneficial for a uh, less raised Binet. We can quickly go over substats. Here we have attack, crit damage, and energy recharge. Always like to have crit rate on my flowers and plumes, but yeah. The plume does have a little bit of crit rate here at 7%, also energy recharge, elemental mastery, and attack percent. On the hourglass, we also have attack percent. Elemental mastery is another big consideration here over attack because pyro's reactions are very strong melt vaporize and of course elements of mastery will increase the damage of those i haven't personally tried it out yet because my only elements of mastery sands is horrible as you can see there the attack sands isn't that much better but at least we do get 40 elemental mastery as well as 13 crit damage so most likely better than whatever that could muster up for the goblet we're obviously going pyro damage bonus again it's very garbage we do have a little bit of elemental mastery there but just besides that, you know, we do have some HP percent there, which is okay for Binet. It's not as much of a sting as it would be for other characters, as he does benefit from it. And with Primordial Jade Cutter, he actually benefits doubly, because he gets a little bit more attack. And finally, the off piece is actually the circlet. Uh, I reluctantly raised this one until I got it to about 12, and I no noticed that all rolls went into crit rate. And then I got it to 16 and 20, and both of those rolls also went into crit rate. So yes, we are rocking here with almost 18% crit rate on this uh, crit damage circlet. Um, looking at the flat HP and flat def, it's kind of a miracle. 
you know, that it didn't touch those. It didn't touch the attack percent either, but I'm obviously totally fine with it only rolling at a crit rate. Sorry about the flex there, I just wanted to show his artifacts. But yeah, here is overall attributes, 1800 attack, uh, 119 elemental mastery, 72 crit rate, 138 crit damage. I haven't really done much to compensate for swapping out the weapons, as again, I had Festering Desire, which has 45% energy recharge on it. I'm noticing he does get his ult a little slower, and I do need to work a little harder to get it. I think 145 energy recharge is workable it's not ideal but it's good enough for now he is currently c2 which i'm very sad about uh, i would definitely like to see six this boy as soon as i can i know he'll be coming in kaching's banner soon but xiao just wrecked me and i don't really care about kaching constellations as i don't find them necessarily interesting or strong Binet c1 is very good mainly for the additional 20 percent of his base attack as a uh, boost his C2 is pretty situational, and most of the time you're not really going to notice it's happening. But yeah, when your Bennett needs healing, you know, when he's under that 70% threshold where his ult heals him heals him up to, um, he'll gain faster energy recharge and you can use ult earlier. I'll be totally honest, I have no idea what his C4 is about, and if people even do uh, held ease with Bennett or not. But yeah, it sounds weird. And then of course C6 sounds very amazing as well. 15% pyro damage bonus and their weapons are infused with pyro can either just be an additional boost if you have a second fire in your team can be a boost just for Bennett himself can make for some pretty interesting team comps when any sword claymore or, or polearm users are in your team pyro kaching might be pretty sick but yeah his constellations are quite good and you know being a four star they're actually quite attainable for the normal person we currently have his talents at 4810 I just recently raised his normal attack a bit because I find myself actually normal attacking with him uh, too much for it to have been level 1. I'll probably raise it to 6 and then maybe hold off. I went ahead and raised Fantastic Voyage to level 10. I think it's the best ult in the game, period. It has an insane amount of utility, like just beyond the obvious, like his super fast healing, the initial hit does a good amount of damage, then there's the actually massive attack boost, and then of course like the less obvious perk when there's a place that keeps infusing you with a certain element, you can just stand in his ring and be applied with pyro and have, you know, the elements disappear because it'll make a little reaction in there that doesn't actually hurt you because his ult doesn't hurt you. Overall, Bennett is just an insane character. I know there are a couple of other four stars that people are really doting over, like, uh him. He also has a lot of versatility, being able to do damage, being able to heal, um, although in co-op this won't heal your partners. I don't believe he gives an actual damage buff like Bennett, but he does allow very easy reactions for someone like Diluc. so in a way it is a damage boost. So yeah, there's my Bennett. He's not perfect. I'd say he's pretty decent though. I think for this showcase I want to pretend he's my main DPS, even though he has a level 4 basic skill but I think that's what we're gonna do. For support, we're gonna have Mona, Zhongli, and maybe Vinti. Chi Chi would be another consideration for easy melts. Vinti would be there for Viridescent. Barbara could also be there for easy Vaporize, though I think uh, Chi Chi's hits a bit faster. But actually we have Mona for Vaporize, so I guess we're gonna go ahead and do it like this. The actual showcase here will be rather short as I play a lot with Binette during every other time I'm playing anyway, so. So I guess there's not too much, but I guess he has gotten a little bit better. So yeah, we're just going to start with uh, Zhongli here. Going to hit him with Binette once to get the fire, going to get Viridescent. I don't know if that actually worked, but regardless, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put him on water now. Get a Vaporize in there. It's all little, you know, 11k. Well, we can continue hitting him with basics here. Let's go and get Mona back. Zhongli. Try a ult here. Solid little 47k uh, without too much setup. You can also see what ult generation looks like with uh, very little energy recharge. Oh, thank you. Easy vaporizes here. It's not horrible. But yeah. Maybe we'll get it from this last enemy here. Yeah, okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and try uh, another ult. That was zero setup, 22k. So obviously, uh, melting or vaporizing before ulting is always a nice thing. Let's try and get a little bit more setup there. So we're going to do this. Going to swirl the fire. 
Going to get Zhongli's shield, going to get Mona, and then going to hit his shield, <laughs> which was pretty useless. But we're going to continue just hitting on him. There's a solid 23k from his, you know, very short cool cooldown uh, E there. But yeah, I think the place Bennett shines the most is in your party. Let's go ahead and try a Vinti Q here. We'll do a uh, little Zhongli. We'll do a Mona E, maybe even a Q, sure. We'll end it with Bennett ult there with 66k. And just, you know, go, go over to these guys, play with them a little bit without too much setup. Oh, you're on water now, I see. That's unfortunate. I would also like to demonstrate his healing abilities without at all trying to make his healing good. I've never actually tried this to see if he's able to, but if he can heal two of them up, I'd say that's good already. Here we go. There's Mona. That's about... I think I missed at least one proc there. Zhongli needs a little bit more. And here we go with Vinti. And there we go. That's actually pretty crazy. So they're all back up to around 70% HP now, which is his upper limit for healing. That is a pretty big part of his kit, so I figured I should show it. Uh, we also have a Ruin Guard here. Sure, let's give this a try. He's standing in water, which is very advantageous for us. Easy Vaporize. Let's get him down first with Venti here. Let's go ahead and hit him. There's a solid little 15k. We'll do this anyway. Unfortunately, I don't think Viridescent's going to proc very well here. We're just going to keep hitting him. We're going to go and do his ult here for a nice solid 52. And Rune Guard's dead. So yeah, we're definitely using him as a sort of main DPS right now with the other three kind of backing him up and boosting him a little bit. And yeah, even for that purpose, he's working really, really well. Uh, I think before we wrap this up, though, we're going to do the good old Viridescent test. We have to do that for every showcase now. It's become a uh, habit, I guess you can say. Unfortunately, I don't think Bennett's going to shine all that much here. Yeah, but let's just see how it goes. Not too shabby, not too shabby. Obviously, Vinti, Zhongli, and Mona did m a lot of the work there, but uh, just really looking at, you know, Bennett's sort of finishing tactics there. And uh, I'd say he held his own. He had to wait a little bit to do his ult there because it wasn't ready. But uh, yeah, you know, it was pretty solid. Granted, it probably would have gone a little bit better if I placed his Q first instead of last, but that would just more help Mona, Zhongli, and Vinti rather than trying to showcase my boy here. I guess just for fun, we can try placing it first to mainly look at the attack boost. I still like to start out with Vinti's ult though. I don't think it made all that much difference, honestly. I probably could have also tried getting Zhongli's buff first as he re reduces their resistance, but yeah, whatever. There's a bunch of nuance there and it doesn't matter too much anyway. But yeah, I suppose that'll pretty much do it for the little Benny showcase here. He's just one monster of a four star. Like, really, he has no he has no business being a four star character. It's crazy. But I am glad he is, obviously, as I actually have hope of C6ing him one day. But yeah, make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below. Leaving a like down there is always greatly appreciated as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. You can always unsubscribe anytime you want to if you don't like my content at one point. I mean, if you've gotten to the end of the video, obviously, it, it, it must be something, right? So consider subscribing, right? But yeah, that'll do it. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.